Fox News host Martha McCallum did some commentary this week, and she expressed shock and anger that the Republicans haven't been able to repeal Obamacare yet. Let's watch, and then we'll discuss. Vacation, and Congress is also just back from vacation, and it seems representatives on Capitol Hill are really not any closer to passing their promised health care reform than they were last week. So here is my story on this. When one party wins control of Congress and the White House, they have a unique opportunity. During President Obama's time in office, the GOP railed on Obamacare. They said it was a disaster, terrible for patients and bad for businesses. Both, in fact, agreed with them. And much to the surprise of Republicans, apparently, elected them and the president to, among other things, do away with it. Now, imagine this in your own life at the company where you work, that you keep camp complaining to the boss that if only he would let you, you could fix the company. And it would be so much better if he would only give you a shot. So one day the boss says, you're on. Let's see what you got. And you say, well, I didn't think you would ever ask. See, uh, my team is not quite sure. And it's actually much more complicated than anybody thought. You know what? Faster than the limo could pull up in front of Trump Tower, you would be headed home with your suitcase on wheels and you would have a zero approval rating at your company. Or kind of like Congress, a 17 percent. So with 68 workdays in the summer for the rest of America, the Senate will be in session for 35 of those as of now. There is talk that they might stick around. So the president is proving to be a rather patient boss and has given his party a nearly seven month extension on a project that could have been worked on and hammered out for six years. So likely the boss, which is actually the American people in this case, will have little patience when they get their chance to weigh in on this. And all of those elected in the sweep in November could very well get swept out the door for congressional malpractice. And who could blame the voters? Because that's what the people who voted for them wanted to happen. I love how little she knows about politics. Like she's saying, if you don't repeal Obamacare... You guys are all going to get voted out. If they do repeal Obamacare, they're all going to get immediately voted out. If they don't, they're still probably not going to do all that well. But they're in a, a, a lose-lose situation. Now, why are they in a lose-lose situation? Because they have zero ideas. They, I love how, so she's really like smug and angry at the Republicans like, oh! You know, oh, you said you're going to do this and you didn't do it. Like, why didn't you do it? Because if you, if all you do is just a, a clean repeal, as they call it, of Obamacare, well, then you have just the complete and utter implosion of the health insurance market. And not even close. It's like a guarantee to happen. If you just repeal like that and, you know, you don't have anything to replace it with, oh, okay, just re repeal it. And whatever happens, happens. She thinks like... You should just, like, repeal it. You should repeal it, and that's it. Well, you have to replace it with something. And the Republicans have zero health care ideas. But guess what? So does Martha McCallum. She's ranting against the Republicans here like, ah, they said they'd do it. They didn't do it. Yeah, because they have nothing to replace it with. They have no ideas to replace it with. And whatever they've come up with so far has been so comically bad that, you know, when the CBO crunches the numbers on it, for example, they go, oh, shit, 28 million more people are going to lose their health insurance. This is a tax cut to the rich where everybody in the top 1% gets an extra $200,000 every year. It's a, an $800 billion cut to Medicaid. It gets rid of protections for pre-existing conditions. It makes them optional in various states. So, like, I want to ask Martha McCallum. Because notice, whenever the Republicans talk about health care... It's always just, like, defined as what they're against. They never have anything to say what they're for. Now, if you talk to somebody on the populist left, what do they tell you immediately? Hey, what healthcare system should we have? Single payer. Medicare for all. They, they answer like that, because they actually have thought about these things, and they have a developed idea and a, and a philosophy. And they have, you know, an, an ideological... They have ideological underpinnings, and, and they've looked at the evidence, and they know, okay, this is the answer. Let's go with this one. Talk to somebody on the right, like the anti-Obamacare right. Oh, okay, so you don't want Obamacare. What do you want? We want to repeal Obamacare. And what do you want? Like, what kind of... A, what, in your ideal system, you get to craft a healthcare system from scratch. What do you want? <laughs> somebody should ask Martha McCallum. What do you want? Oh, the Republicans need to do this. What do they need to do? Go ahead. You say, repeal Obamacare. And then... 
repeal Obamacare. That's not, that doesn't, you're not saying anything. You have to actually have something you're for, not just something you're against. And insofar as anybody does answer that question, what do they say? We need to, at free market, we gotta replace with free market plan. That's the system we had prior to Obamacare, which was so immensely shitty that we needed reform immediately. That's the thing that had all the horrible outcomes and incredibly high prices that we said, we can't leave this alone, we gotta do reform. And by the way, st something they'd never admit, excuse me, is that their idea is Obamacare. The heart of Obamacare is something called an individual mandate. It makes people go on the private market and purchase their health insurance. That was an idea that Richard Nixon proposed, then Bob Dole proposed it, Mitt Romney implemented it in Massachusetts. This is uh, an idea, a policy that was crafted by the Heritage Foundation, a right-wing think tank. They wrote policy papers about it. Newt Gingrich used to support it. Chuck Grassley. These are far-right Republicans. So this, this is the point. They're not, they don't stand for anything, the far-right. And it's hilarious that McCallum is lecturing Republicans because she's in the same fucking boat. You don't know what you're for. You have no fucking clue what you're for. You just know what you're against. And then final point on this is just the assumptions in what she's saying are incorrect. She's like, well, you know, the Republicans won because they were promising to repeal Obamacare. That's why they won in a giant wave. That's it. That's it right there. Why don't you actually go to the polls and take a look instead of just, you know, making, I think this is why Republicans won. Look, here's the reality. Whenever Republicans win elections, it's not because of their message. It's because people are just frustrated with the Democrats. That's why Republicans win elections. The Republicans never win on their actual message. Because to the extent they have a message, it's just the other guys are bad and here we're for a whole bunch of shitty stuff. <laughs> so you can't win on that. So what happens is people are just frustrated with the Democrats not really fighting for the people. So they go, I don't know, we'll try the other thing. That's the only reason Republicans win elections. But she says, well, it's because they wanted to repeal Obamacare. That's why they won. Well, actually, we just covered a poll recently. It just came out. What percentage of the American people want a full repeal of Obamacare? 9%. That's it. Only 9% of Americans want a full repeal of Obamacare. And she's acting like, well, that's why you won. It's because of that. Yeah, American people hate Obamacare. Actually, when you ask people using the term Obamacare, they go, it's like 50-50. Sometimes it's 52% are for it, 52% are against it, so it's a mix. When you use Affordable Care Act, more popular. So people go, I like the Affordable Care Act, I don't like Obamacare. Well, it's the same fucking thing. So it's all in the framing of it. And then when you go provision by provision in Obamacare, virtually every provision... Except the individual mandate. That's the only one that doesn't get majority. But everything else gets a strong majority. Medicaid expansion, you can stay under your parents' health care until you're 26. Um, at least 80% of, of the money insurance companies take in needs to go to actual health care. So provision by provision, it's actually kind of popular. And a lot of people who are mad at Obamacare and are against Obamacare, it's only because they want a Medicare for All system, which is more progressive, not less progressive. So she's just so wrong about everything. Like, notice, you can't... It's like they never just can talk about policy. It's always, when you listen to these right-wing commentators, it's always like a he said, she said with Democrats and Republicans. And like, well, it's like your boss having told you, like, okay, well, we're going to let you tr give your shot, and then they didn't give, give their shot right, and then maybe they're going to get fired, and blah, blah, blah. Just, can you just say what you're trying to fucking say? But you have nothing to say. So you have to give weird analogies and talk about it like it's an office dispute because you don't you don't stand for anything. You're not for anything. You have no answers for health care. The only people on the right that do say something policy related is when they say you're a free market. But that was the system that was so bad that it merited us needing reform. So your answer is to go back to the worst system. That's not an answer. But it is funny also, you know, watching Republicans come to term terms with the fact that, oh, they don't, like, the party doesn't, they don't stand for anything and they can't get anything accomplished because they're just, they're just a mix of hatred for liberals 
They thrive on liberal tears. It's a mix of that and being complete and utter corporatists and just selling out to corporations. When that's your core, when your core is just, we hate the other side and we want to do our donors' biddings, our donors' bidding, well, then you don't... Of course, you're, everything's going to be a fucking train wreck because you don't stand for anything. You don't believe in anything. And so naturally, you're going to be tripping all over yourselves.